Come on, fish, stay on there. I didn't think he's very good when he blew up on it. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah. You know, here we are. It's we're in the end of September, getting closer to October. Um, we actually had like a little couple little cool spells. The water starting to cool off just a touch. Um, these fish are still scattered. You know, I mean, there's some fish still out deep. There's some still up shallow. They're in between. Um, but this time of year, I love to put a top water in my hand and try to cover a lot of water, especially until the sun gets up. Um, I'm going to run shade as long as I can. You know, I, as in top waters, I like to throw like a boss pop. Um, is there a spook? Um, if I got some chop, I'll throw a buzz bait. But I have rods set up to where I can fish in six inches, six inches of water out to 20 foot of water. Um, the water temperature now it's it's still in the mid 70s. Um, it's like today it's gonna it's 50 something this morning. It's gonna get up in the mid upper 80s. Um, so we're still not completely right into that fall transition, but we're starting to get there. You know the days are getting shorter. Um, those shad, I'm starting to see a little bit of migration of the big shad coming up shallow. So to me, that's the first initial sign that fall is starting to get here, and it will go ahead and start pulling them big fish out of the deep water and get up there in the shallows. So. <laughs> I didn't take too long. <laughs> There we go. There's that little guy. Oh, boss pop. Starting off the morning. He's got her sideways choked out. Pretty good one. Start the morning out. You know, when I'm what type of banks I'm looking for this time of year. It's still, like I said, we're still in this early transition. Um, I like, I still like deep water close. Um, these fish aren't fully committed to chasing shad on just flats everywhere. So you, they still want that deep water access because it still hasn't cooled off just an entirely lot. Um, like this bank here, it's, it's kind of more of 45. So I still got some depth out here off of it. Uh, and those fish, they can easily pull up on it, feed early and then you know back off of it just a little bit so they still have that um, security of the deep water close to them. A lot of times this time of year though too you, you got to find bait. Uh, I mean like down this bank, you, I don't know if you can see it but there's little shad popping and stuff down through here. Um, even back there a little further we had um, sand bass coming up schooling so whenever they're around you know you're around bait so that's a couple of good areas to start is Find the bait, find you some deep water excess close to the bank, and that is a very good starting point for you. <laughs> Come right back, Kelly. He just followed it all the way through there. Oh, oh. Uh, he, he come up there, he chased some little shad up on the bank, and, and uh, now we're going to break my motor off back there, too. He chased those shad and blew up on mine. Missed it, blew back up on it, and I started reeling it. He came up there and nailed it. You just can't, like, when one does blow up on it, you don't just necessarily reel your bait in real fast because they're chasing. So him hitting it, he might have not even got the hooks at all. So, or there could have been two or three with him. So you kind of keep working your bait, and they will come back and hit it sometimes. Man, fish stay on there. I didn't think he's very good whenever he blew up on it. Oh, whoa, 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 easy, easy. Oh, he's got her pretty good though. No, come on, stay there, stay there. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, Mr. Long and Lean. You can see he just kind of slapped that though. He didn't, it's almost like he didn't want it too good, but a little sticky hook's got a hold of him. You know, that's, that kind of goes back. You can kind of see we've got isolated structure here. We've got some stumps out here. And those bigger rocks right there that stuck out away from the bank is actually where this fish came off of. That's kind of them old 
Oklahoma long and lean fish this time of year. They're getting ready to get up here and get shallow though and start eating. He'll fatten up for the winter and he'll be ready to rock. A lot of times I'm gonna choose like a pop bar over a walking style bait, especially when I'm very target oriented. Um, you know, I'm saying with that is those isolated rocks or those stumps that I'm throwing by, I want that bait to stay in the strike zone a lot longer. A walking bait will, you have to really slow it down to work and get real tight, but a pop bar this time of year for me excels more because it stays right there in that strike zone. There we go. Better fish. Ah. That fish, he, they were just sitting there, you know. I've switched over to the dinger, and the sun's got up. It's a little, got a little bit tougher as far as the shallower fish. And I've come up to some, you know, shallow docks that have brush on them. Um, and you know, these, they're just isolated though. I don't, I'm not fishing a big marina docks or anything like that. I'm just some isolated docks that have some brush around them. I've kind of kept an open mind because, and have another, you know, I've got several rods rigged up with different baits. This Falcon 7.4 is really a good Texas rig rod. It's a medium heavy. I set the hook real hard. And the flex of this rod allows me to not to rip a big hole in these fish's mouth. When it's this time of year, you just kind of, you really, and I'll say open mind, you, you've got to keep your options open because the fish are in so many different stages. So keep you several, you know, three or four rods rigged up with some maybe bottom baits, uh, maybe a mid-draft crankbait and in that top water and allows you to cover that water a lot quicker and more efficiently. Oh yeah, not a bad little, not a bad fish there. Oh, there's two or three with him too. <laughs> Wish they would come up there and ate it themselves. <laughs> it's kind of funny, this time of year, those fish will start to group up a little bit, even up there really shallow. I said he had four or five with him. Uh, you know, my, my rod choice with my topwaters is probably sometimes a little bit different. Uh, I, I like a little bit stiffer rod because I don't want to have to work myself to death because you have a flimsy rod and you're popping this popper, you're having to move a long ways. Where if you have a little bit stiffer rod like this head turner, I don't have to work just a little bit and that bait has got all the action that I'm needing to get out of it. Um, another main thing, I, I throw it on braid, SX1 braid. And the key to it though is having a leader. Um, I have a nylon, this is a fire leader. It floats and it's also a good shock absorber because it's got a lot of stretch to it. That allows me to not tear that hook out of those fish's mouth, but with the braid, I'm still able to get a good hook set in them out on those long casts. I put that head turner with it because it's a lot a little bit stiffer and that absorbs that shot from me setting the hook into those fish and allows me to have better hookups. But that stiffer rod also, I have run a little bit shorter rod. This is a 610. I'm about 5'10", and whenever I'm uh, working this popper, a seven foot or even a seven two, I have a hard time, I want to hit the side of my boat, or I want to hit the water, and that just messes me up. So I go with that little bit shorter rod, I can, and when I'm around those little tight uh, nicks to throw that popper around, I'm able to really uh, get accurate cast of that little bit shorter rod. There we go, well there we go, that's a pretty good one there. You know I actually missed that fish the first time I flipped in there, set the hook, and he, <laughs> he took my dinger from me, re-rigged. Left her right back in there and he ate it. It's a pretty good one. Be still, buddy. Come on now. You know, they, these fish can get a little bit of pressure this time of year. Put that dinger on, put you a few more fish in the boat. This little dock here, it's got a little brush pot here in the corner of it. You know, making multiple flips to a piece of cover this time of year is very crucial. Uh, you know, it seems like early in the year, you're going to fish and it seems like the first or second pitch, they'll bite. You get later in the year, that fish has probably seen a hundred different worms in the last two months probably. So, going there, I took that dinger. Like I said, it's a little bit more subtle, but still got a big enough profile that those fish are going to eat it. But like I said, I, I flipped in there, that was my second or third pitch in there. 
and that fish finally ate it. He hit it once and I lost him and uh, I was able to pitch back in there and go ahead and get him to bite again. But multiple cast into cover right now is definitely a big deal. Depending on what you want to do this time of year, go with what you're very confident in. Um, there's still enough fish out real deep that if you like to go out and maybe throw a shaky head or a Carolina rig or a jig out deep, you can do that. Um, if you like to throw a topwater or stay shallow, which is more of my style of fishing, you can go do that too. You can run enough stuff that you can possibly come across enough good fish throughout a day to compete you know, in tournaments. But just wanting to catch fish, stay pretty versatile this time of year. Um, keep you, you don't have to go a lot away out on your rods. Get you four or five rods out. Um, and four or five different baits and to cover all the depth ranges. This time of year, definitely you want to stay from the secondary points out to the main lake points to help you catch more fish doing that. <laughs>